Yo, how's it going? Open world games date back a a few decades by now, with the earliest of games being from like the DS age as well as say the N64 days. They offer an expansive experience, like you get to live in that story and experience like the entire world that they want you to feel and it's always great. You can find little easter eggs hidden around the map, new areas you haven't seen or little stories that these characters can tell and it just gives you like a sense of depth that I don't feel like anything else could give you that other than like an expansive story. Let me get into like the first example like Pokemon. Everyone's heard of it, everyone's probably played the card game, you know, that's like the, still the most popular thing about it, but the original games, they were in like districts basically, since the, when they came out they didn't have much space to make the world massive, but they made it into districts, which I think still would count towards open world, not really, I'll get into that in a bit with some other games, but the premise of the game was that you're just like, you Ash Ketchum, you're catching Pokemon, you battle other people, you get good. Ooh. That's all I wanted to do, man, I want to get good. Well, in the um, in the newer games, though, they did make it more open world, so it, it is forgiven, <laughs> at least. But then, to the next game, which is on the N64, is Mario 64, which, if you've never heard of it, is probably the most commonly speedrun games of all time. It is one of the, well, most regarded to do anyway, and has some of the most craziest times on it. That's, uh, that's for another day. It's just a simple game, everyone knows about it. The originals, like, the original 2D version, which was for the NES, you just go through the levels and try to save Bowser. Well, not, <laughs> try to save the princess. But this version, you have, like, a hub that you go for these worlds to collect stars, complete them, and then just go back in, get all the stars, and then just explore the worlds, what they have to offer, and I think that's like a great system. It's like, gives you like a main point to come back to, and then just to lead that into the ending as well. It's like, it's all tied into one. And then we have like another game, which I may butcher a lot because I, I didn't play this title. And I know I should have, but it's the original Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is the second most speedrun game of all time behind Mario 64. Now, the plot of the game is that you are to defend Hyrule and Triforce from Gerudo King Gan Gandalf, which I would go more into detail about that, but I'm yet to play the game, so bear with me. But I have seen a few speedruns, and it's pretty cool how the ocarina, you can use it to blow a little tune and it teleports you to a different area which I thought was like a neat feature to tie into the games as well as how the uh, combat system works with you dodging backwards and forwards like you're uh, just pinned onto the enemy I thought it was quite cool how that was always featured in the game and one that I would like to see more often which usually you can find in some indie games or if I recall Mafia. I think Mafia did it, but I'm not too certain about that. I could be miss missing it with a different game, so please bear that in mind. Now let's get on to another game that was very influential and a very popular series to this day, but the company's now gone quite shit. That is Grand Theft Auto by Rockstar Games. The originals 1 to 2 are 2D flat, but it allowed you just to drive around in cars kill people and they developed a premise of what was going to be. Then in GTA 3 it got expanded to having quests and in a 3D well, in a 3D space. It allowed you to fly helicopters as well but the uh, the driving was shocking to say the least. But I think the best one in the entire series is Vice City or GTA San Andreas because in the game they have like this open world map but to stop players from going over to it, you would either A, be blocked off completely, or in San Andreas's uh, case, you get a 5 star wanted. So, every time you go over there, you have like the highest level of police blocking you away, so you cannot go to that part. So you have to finish where you sign first. And that's what I loved about it. You have like, these areas that you can raise a gang, as well as completely stories based on Ryder, to then uh, 
big smoke, which I won't spoil anything, but you might see that later, but he uh, plays a big part in the story, but these games are very influential and still are very popular today, even though they're just reduced down to microtransaction hell. Yikes. But another series similar to GTA is Saints Row. But you may be wondering, that doesn't sound a bit right, but you may be right about that because the first one and two are very gangster related. They have, well, in two, they feature like many gangs that you have to like do quests on and then you end up killing them in the end. You know, Saint Joe on top. L, take it. Uh, but in Saint Joe the Third and like the ones after that, they go for this more cartoonish style. Like, it, yeah, there's still a gang in the third one, but it's more fun, it's more energetic, it's not like this heavily gang association. Which I find to be like a nice little balance. You get like these have like heavy stars, but then you get like this just cartoonish one. You get like this scene here where this guy is just a gimp and he's just sat there running out and you have to recruit him for your gang. It's quite hilarious. They also have like these innovative systems, like where you can just customize your gang, your, your place as well, make it all look better. It's quite cool, as well as some places just upgrade while you're going to star it and also you take over when you defeat a rival gang in the game. I thought that was a clever way of going about it. Now onto the opposite spectrum, you have games like Terraria and Minecraft, but you may be um, curious about Terraria, it's 2D, but it is open world seen as you literally are well exploring the entire world as well but you know it's uh blocked off at the end but what can you get it's 2d I, you can't help it but minecraft i did speak about this in the last video for sandbox that is a one other thing it is good for being a sandbox game but you have like an unbelievable amount of space to just explore visit all the biomes just see the mine shaft, zombie spawners, kill a bunch of ender dragons, even summon a wither. You have like a ton of aspects you can do and then just build a giant village with your friends and family. It's great. It is just a game just to chill out, relax, you'll love it, trust. But let's go on to the, uh, the zombies. These are usually a main staple in like survival games. You have like State of Decay where it's 3D, but you don't do it in first person. It's like the camera is a bit behind, and you're just above the head of the character. You have to find supplies, rummage around the uh, expensive city to hopefully find some supplies for your settlement, and hopefully don't lose any characters because if you do, those characters are gone. You say goodbye to them, bro. They'll be in a grave, but by the time you're done. But let's let's get on to Dead Rising 2. Now, the original Dead Rising, I haven't played it, but Dead Rising 2 is, I wouldn't say it's similar, but it is kind of in the same areas, like it's both set in a mall, you have like, the again, a zombie outbreak bursting out with the main character, well, of this game, needing to find medicine, Zombrex, as it's called in the game, for his daughter, um, if he didn't, she would die, not to mention there is a 72 hour period in the game, if you don't leave, like, the f finish the story by then, it's over. Y your game's done. Which, I thought that was insane. It gives you, like, a sense of time. Like, it's urgent. You have to do this. And you have to get the Zombrex every hour. So, it, time counts in the game. As well as, like, you have these uh, bosses that are mentally insane on many different aspects. Like, they try to kill you. Some are just happy there's a zombie apocalypse and stuff like that. And it's crazy how it is done not to mention you have these um crafting stations where you can make turn a baseball some nails baseball bat with nails baby my favorite was always the uh, wheelchair with guns it's just always fun to start rock around with that and just go grr, grr. <laughs> it's, it's just it's the best man it's the best on the other spectrum dead island now i love dead island they just announced recently dead island 2 that game was stuck in development hell for nine years, but I digress, we're going on to the original. The original has um, probably the best opening track known to man, Who Do You Voodoo. It's so catchy, it, it changes the pace of the entire game. It taken seriously, 
as well. Like you have characters that are different build styles. You got guns, knives, blunt weapons, and then throwing weapons, which gives you a different style on what you want to do. But I'll be remiss if I said the story was kind of yeah. Like there is some loops in it that are just a bit bad, but I, I'm not going to talk about it much. The main part of the game is uh, the functionality, the weapons, the the killing, and they did an insane job on it. Like the way the weapons move, as well as how you kill a zombie. It's like it feels like you're in the game, as well like how your character moves. It's kind of sluggish, but you'll probably be sluggish if you're in a zombie apocalypse, man. Like, come on, let's be real. I can, I can relate. I'll be sluggish as well. Let's go on to well. Side of another game, but it is a very popular series, but it, it does it in a different way. Borderlands 2. It's a different game to how Borderlands 1 was. It was more gritty, I would say. Borderlands 2 makes it more cartoonish, but it has probably the best villain in gaming. Like, he stays with you throughout the entire game, clowning you and mocking you, and just being a general nuisance. Just Make, making you pity yourselves and he's great not to mention like the story as well for it is i think find it to be one of the best in like the entire series it was done perfectly the game still has flaws however when it first released there were a ton of issues with like the uh, weapon drops so you have like a system where it goes from common to pearlescent the legendaries from dedicated bosses and mini bosses were very hard to get the weapon from, so it got later nerfed for the better, obviously. If it was still like that, I don't think it would have got people back into it because like, the main point of the game is to be like this role playing looter shooter. You uh, go out, kill enemies, get better weapons, you go out, you go do it again, get better weapons, repeat, and follow along with the story. It's just what better way to do than that? Now, on the opposite spectrum, well, it's still a role-playing game, you've got the Fallout series, but the best one, in my opinion, is New Vegas. I talked about it briefly, Fallout 4 and its settlements uh, building in the last video, but this, I think, has the best story, in my opinion. It is very expansive, it doesn't lock you to a certain narrative, like, you've got to do that and that. Like, if you don't like the people in the game, in like a town, you can kill them and you get a bad rep, locking that side of the quest forever, but you can still complete the game under many pretenses, like you can join the Legion, you can go with Yes Man, Mr. House, the NCR, fuck them, don't like them, can't have it. But I just like how expansive the game is, as well as it offers many features, like gambling, like you're in New Vegas. It's like... All the things you want to do, and it offers like a cool car, uh, card game called uh, Caravan, which I still don't know how to play. I'll need to have a look up with it, but there isn't. There is some downsides to the game, since it was made in like a year and a half because of Bethesda giving them a really tight deadline. It is heavily buggy, as well as has many issues, but that can be overlooked by the m massive modding scene for the game, as well as. A lot of patches they've done for it to make it a lot more stable and a like an enjoyable game. I can't express this enough. If this goes on sale, uh, sale on Steam, please get it. It is worth the cheap amount you have to pay for it. It offers a great story. You will love it. Trust me. Now on the uh, different spectrum, you have like games like Sunset Overdrive, which kind of does a similar thing to Dead Island, which I didn't touch about being district based. But let me explain about that. Whereas Dead Island does it in a way where you've got the, like, these tunnels you go through to get to a different area. Sunset Overdrive blocks you, so it's like natural progression to then, oh, I've got to go over to this island to go do some stuff. So it gives you that edge of progression, like, oh, you, you gain close to finishing the game. The game itself is very cartoony, it's based on style points, like what Ultra Kill does, but in their way, they do it like on these like grinding, like you're playing like a skateboard game, doing tricks and all that, killing these in orange infected zombies that were infected by drinking an energy drink that was promoted at the start of the game, 
that turn them all into like, these different types of mobs and you've got like a ton of different ones like bloaters that blow up etc these ones that can spawn them as well so there's quite a few mobs to go through the game and it's quite cool how they've done it i'm going to touch up on this uh, one last game and then at the end i'm going to recommend a few other games that i think were pretty good that i recommend you should play i think that they do an, a good job but i'll get to that later the last one i want to talk about briefly is project zomboid it released a couple of years back but it's now out of beta as of 2021 i believe in december it is probably the most realistic zombie survival game to like, at the moment. Like, after a certain amount of days, the power and water will cut off, so you, you're forced to thrive on your own. You have to catch water from the rain, you have to defend yourself with carpentry and stuff like that to make sure your base is fortified from the zombies. Not to mention, like, if you get a cut, a laceration and stuff like that, you have to put an alcohol wipe on it or like, disinfectant and then wrap it up to make sure the wound doesn't get any dangerous and you have like different spawn points say like Muldrich which is a very safe to West Point which is absolute hell because it's massive and you have like a ton of zombies there as well and you got like uh, San Francisco as well in one part of the map which you, you can't spawn in there but you can definitely go to it as well which I haven't been there yet and I would like to go there at some point and see what it's about but yeah that's open worlds for you they can come in many farms really it can be with zombies it can be closed districts that still offer you a giant map just closed up into sections to give that progression as well as it gives you just that edge just to suck you into the story as well as give you more to explore and for the games i was talking about a bit before this i would recommend slime rancher Daisy Rust is a great example with friends, trust, you'll love it. And just a few others I'll link in the comments as well that I remember in my head that I think you would happily enjoy. And thank you for watching to the end, if you did. Like the video, if you like it. If you didn't, dislike it. If you have any other suggestions like music, games, anything, leave in the comments. Subscribe if you want to. See yous.